Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This is episode number 40 of Coaching Connections. On today's episode, we have Coach Leonard from John Jay High School in San Antonio, Texas. We also have Coach Lucas Ramirez from Scottsdale, Arizona. He's the head coach at Seguro High School. Two outstanding guys, never met each other before, but had a great conversation. I hope you enjoyed this episode just as much as I did. Again, this is episode number 40, Coach Leonard, Coach Ramirez. Let's get after it. So Coach Leonard, this is Coach Ramirez. I know you guys just said hello, but uh, uh, we got Texas and, and Arizona in the house today. <laughs> Outstanding. Well, welcome to Texas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's a, it's a big place, huh? <laughs> have, have you ever been to Texas, Coach? Yeah, I actually, uh, weirdly enough, or not weirdly enough, small world, when I was younger, I lived in Cedar Park for like six years. Okay. So right outside of Austin. Yep. And then I, I actually briefly, last summer, I spent three months out in Tyler, Texas. Okay. And I was working with the men's basketball program over there. Um, you know, the head coach over there is Lewis Wilson. He, this will be his second season there out in East Texas. But, yeah, I've spent some time in Texas, and uh, I definitely enjoy it. Nice place. Well, we appreciate the, the kind regards. What about you, Coach uh, Leonard? You ever been to Arizona? Uh, yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I want to say it was the um, summer after my senior year. My parents and I, we went to um, – we're going to the Grand Canyon and whatnot, and I had a cousin that was going to school at Arizona State. So uh, mm-hmm. we kind of stopped and saw her and, uh, and and enjoyed it. And other than that, you know, just visiting, that's, that's all we've been. No, it's a beautiful place, and and and, uh, and your campus, Coach uh, Ramirez. You know, I've seen pictures. It looks like a beautiful, beautiful campus that you work on. Yeah, yeah, it is. We have a, we have a great view of the uh, Camelback Mountains, uh, not too far off. But most 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 schools in Arizona, like, we're pretty lucky. We got pretty sweet views of the mountains, and and it's a nice little nice little setup when it's not 120 degrees out. Yeah, it looks surreal. You know, we don't have the, those kind of views in Texas, not, not with any mountains or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. Coach Leonard, you, you, you hopped on twice. <laughs> there we go. Hopefully I'm only on there once now. <laughs> there, there we go. It was, uh, for some reason, my iPad was echoing. Yeah, no, no biggie. All right. Well, first, let me just say thank you guys, Coach Leonard and Coach Amitas, for uh, taking time out of your day to – to sit down and talk life and talk hoops and everything else in between. I appreciate you guys. Wow, thank you. Thanks for the invite. Thank you. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. Yes, sir. You know, summer, summer kind of flew by on us. So um, what, did, what did you guys do over, over the summer break and, and, and really during that lockdown period where things were really kind of scary and, and what did you find yourself doing kind of to, to pass that time and you guys pick up any new hobbies, you know, watch any good TV? You know, what did you guys uh, do with your time? Lucas, go ahead. Yeah, geez. Uh, seems like uh, it's been a year since we started quarantine, right? Yeah. Uh, well, weirdly enough, uh, you know, we got hired in March 7th. So days before we got locked down here in Arizona, Um, so interesting timing, just taking out a new position, trying to get to know the kids, trying to put your staff together, you know, trying to get all organized, not knowing what's next, uh, or when you're going to be allowed back to school or, you know, in the gym. Mm -hmm. So from a basketball side of things, there's a lot of time organizing. I joke around with my administration and say, you know, there's no excuse that we, none of us are, uh, disorganized, you know when we do return um so just a lot of time just organizing getting things ready which uh is was a great thing for me you know taking on a new program and and making sure we got everything lined up but then outside of that honestly it was kind of nice to have a a change of pace to slow down uh a little bit just spending time with family and you know things that you normally don't get a chance to do all that all the time just because we're always so busy and on the go whether you're a teacher, coach, right, you're, it never ends. So mm-hmm. um, that was a positive, was just spending time with family, for sure. I mean, it, it's a shame what it took to do that, you know, with everything going on in the world. But, um, you know, if there is a positive in it, you know, was, was spending time with family for me. Outstanding. 
Well, actually, um, I actually, my birthday was in May and, uh, I got a, a new grill. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I can tell you, I, I spent a lot of time barbecuing as y'all can see, I love to eat and stuff. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I did a lot of barbecuing and, and, and I think like you said, uh, Lucas, the, the time spent with the family is, it, it was really something that I think we, we take advantage of that, you know, that we don't, or we don't take advantage of enough. Uh, you know, you mentioned COVID caused this, but you know, I look at it. Fortunately, my wife was, had to come home. And so she was working from home. Um, my daughter was in the restaurant industry and she wasn't able to go to work. And so we were all here and it, it was, it was really neat for me. And, um, I really enjoyed it. My wife's actually still working at home. Um, she said she may not even go back until March. Wow. So, um, it's that, that was really, you know, the time spent and don't get me wrong. I mean, I, I, I played some Xbox. I got my games in and, and stuff <laughs> like that. And, um, you know, just kind of watching a lot of, you know, basketball videos. Cause you never want to just, uh, stay stagnant in what you do. So I would watch a lot of, uh, you know, basketball videos and, um, and things. So I tried to stay in the game quite a bit besides Xbox, but, uh, I, uh, that, that, that was about it, man. I really just enjoyed the time with the family and, and I still do. There's, there's a lot we can learn from 2k though. Also coach, especially <laughs> inbounds place. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so I know uh, coach Leonard, you're already back in school. Uh, what about you guys in, in Arizona? Are you guys back in school? We are not in person yet. Um, this will be our sixth week um, of school, and we've been doing online, so or they call it enhanced distance learning, um, which is basically for kids who are going to be in online but then return once they give us the, the green light. The other option is to just do straight online, which is through the district, not really through the school. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've done six weeks of that, or this will be our sixth week, and then we actually got the green light to go back in person October 12th after our fall break, so just kind of on their end of things, planning that and the return and what that looks like and, you know, what's going to come with that, so mm -hmm. um, interesting times ahead for sure. So uh, what's, what school do you work at? I'm at Saguaro High School in Scottsdale. Okay, and, and how, how big is that campus? How many kids attend that school? Oh, a little over, probably close to 1,300. Okay. Nice. And, uh, and so, Coach Leonard, you, you coach at John Jay, which in Texas is a 6A, and you guys yes, are, have about how many kids on campus? Uh, probably right at about 3,000. Okay. So, how are you guys doing that? How are you adjusting to the new norm on your campus? You know, what does it look like for you? Well, for me, as uh, actually starting tomorrow, I guess we're supposed to get another uh, wave of students coming in. Um, I personally um, haven't seen any. I know we had a couple of kids coming in, was, I think it was last week, and um, but everything else is just done virtually. Uh, I know, you know, every class is, is a Zoom class. Like I was telling you earlier, even our athletic period is done on Zoom, like nobody's on campus. So... Um, I do know uh, the one thing I think that's a big time positive that's coming out of this, you know, when kids are in class, they don't want to ask questions. Mm -hmm. They don't want to, uh, you know, they stay kind of clammed up. And one thing with the, uh, with the zoom, they have to ask, yeah. they have to ask questions. I get more emails now from students than I ever have total in my career up to this point. Yep. And I'm on year 19. So, you know, that, that's a big time positive in my opinion, you know, now that, uh, they're start the kids are actually being more interactive. Yep. So, uh, I, I, I almost want it to stay that way because it seems like the kids are, are taking more of an investment in their, in their education. And I think it's forcing them to grow up a little bit faster and mature in that regard. You know, yes, uh, they, they become dependent on this quite a bit. And so I, like I told my basketball boys, I said, welcome to what college is going to be like. Hmm. Um, you know, you're going to have to really take ownership over your education and, 
and you have a question, I mean, I could try to answer, but I'm not your science teacher. Email right. your science teacher. And, um, you know, you have a conflict in your schedule between your live session of science and, and your history class. Well, communicate that to them and let them know, hey, this is what's going on. What do you advise me to do? And so I think right. it's forced them to, to communicate a lot better than they, than they had to. And so that, I think that's a huge positive also. I couldn't agree more. Yes, sir. So let's talk a little bit about you guys' childhood. You know, where did you guys grow up? You know, did you have any positive influences in your life that, that sent you down this path you know, to want to be a coach? Uh, okay, I'll, I guess I'll, I'll go hey, first. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, I, well, I grew up here in San Antonio. I, I went to Marshall High School, and uh, I was uh, blessed enough my senior year to get a coach that, in my opinion, invested in me personally. At least that's the way I felt. I know he did everything for everybody, but I feel like he invested in me personally. And that's Coach Silstein at Clark. Um, he, he came in my senior year. And um, I tell anybody who wants to listen, my entire career from a player in high school to a player in college to coaching and teaching has – has gone through him. Mm -hmm. um, after my senior year, um, I played JUCO. I played the last two years. St. Phillips had a program. And um, so played junior college ball there and then went on to so, – so anyway, my bad. I, I meant to say Coach Silstein is the reason I'm where I am now. Okay. So he, he really influenced me to want to teach and coach. So after uh, St. Phillips, well, Coach Silstein had left Marshall and went to Baylor mm -hmm. as assistant coach. And uh, he was able to get me on the team there at Baylor when I left JUCO. And um, unfortunately for me, um, I ran into the great issue. And um, that's why I have made it my life goal to push the, the grades with my kids. Mm -hmm. Because I, I missed out, I think, on, on a huge opportunity um, to play at the highest level for an extended time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I got there, I got to play us and that was it. Um, and, you know, we had great players my, uh, like uh, Michael Williams that had graduated before me then went and spent almost 12 years, 13 years in the league. Yeah. And then David Wesley came in afterwards. And um, and then there's great, play, uh, great people like Melvin Hunt, who is an uh, assistant coach in the NBA, Dennis Lindsay, who's the owner of uh, – owner is the uh, director of basketball operations, I believe for the Utah jazz. And, uh, you know, so I was involved with a lot of great people that, you know, did their job. And, and so I, and of course, and I didn't. And so I really, really, really pushed um, the grades now with, 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 with my kids. And, Cause I don't want anybody to go through that and miss opportunities yeah. uh, like that. Um. And then I joined the military, and when I got out, or when I came back to San Antonio in 98, um, I started coaching club with Coach Silverstein in 2000. So my last two years, 2000 to 2002, I coached club with him, got out of the military, and he introduced me to Coach Jackledge. I don't know if you remember, the, the son Jackledge is well, a coach our, He was our superintendent at Harlan Dell ISD for a while. And he's the one that hired me. And um, due to the, in my opinion, the relationship with him and Coach um, Silstein. So they put me in touch with Martha Quijano, who, in my opinion, was, is one of the best leaders around. I mean, I, I really hate I lost touch with her. Um, she hired me, you know, to teach and coach there at Leal. And then she went to Southside High School and uh, took me over there with her. And then when she retired, man, I just, um, I mean, I hate it. I mean, I, I would have followed her to, I don't know. I'd have followed her anywhere. She was an excellent leader and was really uh, about business. So um, yeah, I, that, that's the anyway. So I went to Southside and then I went to Cole. So anyway, that, as far as my career, that, that's how I got started. But I got to tell you, and I, and I want to give enough people the credit um, I've been blessed to uh, to work with and, and, and coach with outstanding coaches that have really really built uh, helped me grow as a as a coach. 
not only from Coach Silverstein, because I can text him right now and ask him something, and he's going to reply, you know, with some X's and O's. But uh, Herb Moore, I don't know if you all know yep. Coach Moore. Um, I was able to work with him at Cole for a couple of years, and I learned so much. I got to do boys and girls at Cole, and uh, he was just amazing. And then when I went on the girls' side, um, I don't know if you know Tina Guerrero. Yep. She did it. I mean, she was just an amazing coach, and – and, and and I learned. I still use a lot of the stuff in my playbook that I learned from the from the two of them. And then I can't, you know, I, I can't say enough about Coach Floyd here at Jay. When I left Cole and came to came to Jay, Coach Floyd just, you know, he was one of those people that, or is one of those people that you can't wait to go to work. Yeah. You know, while I was working with him, I looked forward to coming to Jay every single day. Yeah. You know, and, and and when he retired, man, it was just like there was just a big void, uh, big void there. And uh, you know, so I'm I'm trying my best to continue on with his legacy and and the things that he's done uh, there at Jay. And uh, so I've I've just been been royally blessed uh, with, with people that I've been surrounded with. And how long have you been the head coach there at John Jay? This is my fourth year. The fourth year? Nice. Yes, sir. So a couple of things. First, let me just say uh, much respect to you for taking uh, a big uh, learning experience that you had in your life with the grades and, and, and taking that lesson that you learned and, and applying that to your program. That's, that's wonderful. And Thank you. I also just want to say to Coach Ramitas, I know you don't know Coach Celestine, but uh, he is pretty much a, a, a living legend around around San Antonio. That that dude is pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. I've never played for him, never worked under him, never worked alongside him. But even even if I was to reach out to him, which we he and I will talk, you know, from time to time, uh, mm-hmm. if I needed help with anything, he's more than willing to to offer his his expertise. And and to be honest with you, he's called me on a couple of occasions and said, Coach, I saw you guys at a tournament. What are you doing when you do this and this? Tell me about it. I mean, he's just always learning. And to see a guy of that caliber ask someone like a young guy like me what I'm doing and, and him trying to continue to learn kind of puts things into perspective for sure. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. Well, Coach, uh, this, what about yeah. your childhood? So for me, uh, you know, my childhood, I was born in San Jose, uh, California. Um, spent a couple of years there. I really don't remember it. I was so, so young. And that, that's when uh, we moved to – my family and I, we moved to Cedar Park, Texas. So we spent six years there. Um, loved living there. It was awesome. And then we spent about three and a half in Franklin, Tennessee, right outside of Nashville. And then going into middle school, we moved here to Scottsdale. And we just moved because my dad kept getting different jobs. My dad worked in the business world. Mm-hmm. Um, so, we, you know, we just followed him around. Um, you know, he worked for Apple in the Bay Area, and then Dell blew up in the Round Rock, Cedar Park area. So then we, you know, went to went to Texas. So just followed him along the the tech business journey. Um, but yeah, no, uh, kind of same same story in some ways in terms of just being surrounded with great people and mm-hmm. and great relationships and just people who are willing to pour into you and and believe in you. You, you know, even when probably it's it's questionable to have a new new young guy starting out, right? You get, someone's got to take a chance on you. And, um, you know, for me, I think it was a couple different people along the way. Um, yeah, you know, first and foremost, like for me, like my father is is someone who is, I mean, he, he's my ultimate hero, man, and, and just everything he's done. You know, he, he came here from El Salvador um, and has just worked his tail off. So for me, it's, it's like just trying to be half the guy he is and I'll be happy, you know, mm-hmm. with everything that I, that I can do. Um, but from a teaching and basketball perspective, uh, you know, for me, a couple of my high school coaches uh, that I had, uh, you know, one in particular, Paul Sanger, who's actually now on my staff, uh, which is really awesome. Um, we just built a great relationship when I was a player. And it was bigger than basketball, mm-hmm. you know, just being there for me and, and us just having those, those conversations that apply to life and, and uh, 
just being able to joke around too. I mean, like I remember being in high school and just thinking like, wow, like this guy, he's a great coach. We respect him. But then like he also shows that side of him where, you know, we can joke around and have a good time. And, you know, um, so he was awesome to be around. And, and obviously him and I have always remained in touch and, and it's going to be awesome working with him, you know, this season um, and having him being a part of our staff. Uh, another guy, uh, a guy by the name of Michael Gwynn, who's my AAU coach. And he actually, he's the one who gave me my start in coaching. When I was 18 years old, I graduated from high school and I reached out to him and said, Hey, like, I want to get into coaching, you know, can I help out in some way? And that's when he right away was like, yeah, go ahead. And he threw me into the fire with an AAU program. And then he threw me into the fire at the high school level. Um, he didn't have to do that. He believed in me somehow, some way. And, and, um, you know, it's without him truly, you know, giving me that shot, um, in 2011, 2012, you know, I, I wouldn't be where I'm at today for sure. No question about it. So he was huge. Um, and then a couple other coaches along the way that I've worked for, Matt Gordon at Phoenix College, Juco out here. Um, just a really, really great guy, phenomenal coach. Um, and just learned a lot from him. And then, you know, my next stop at Horizon High School in Scottsdale, that's my alma mater. I was an assistant there um, for Jerry Connor, Arizona Hall of Famer. Um, you know, and he's just such a phenomenal human being, you know, and, and he's in his late seventies right now. So it was great to work with him and, you know, take his wisdom from all his experience. And, and then also too, like in turn, like he gave me a lot of responsibilities, mm -hmm. uh, and freedom as well. Um, you know, helping with things that he really wasn't able to do just because he wasn't on campus every day or, you know, hard for him to teach on the floor with certain things. So mm -hmm. um, just an invaluable experience with him. So, I mean, all, all three guys I've worked for, um, you know, just, just uh, unbelievable experience. Oh, it's them. And then from an education perspective, um, you know, I really didn't know I wanted to teach until probably my senior year of high school. And I, w I remember sitting in an American government class and second period, and I was just sitting there and I'm like, this is cool. Like, I like this, like this guy teaching, like he, he's passionate about it. He loves it and he has fun teaching it. And that, that kind of put the idea in my head that, you know, maybe I want to teach American government. And then from there I ended up going to do that. So just seeing someone super passionate and loving their job and being excited about showing up to work every day. Kind of like you mentioned coach, mm -hmm. um, like players and students can tell, you know, how, how happy you are like showing up to the gym or showing up to the classroom. Um, so for me that always stood out. And then weirdly enough, uh, I ended up student teaching for him and then we ended up working together in the same department in the same building for four years, past four years. And like, we're best of friends now. Um, so it's kind of fun, but yeah, I mean, just a lot of great people along the way and, and just great relationships built, you know, what it's all about, you know, people talk about it all the time and mm -hmm. kind of to the point where it's a cliche now, but I mean, it's so true though. It's just the relationships with, with your players, relationships with teachers, coaches, and, mm -hmm. and, you know, without any of those, you know, we wouldn't be where we're at. So, right. Yeah. Safe to say that, that, uh, we've had some help from very important and influential people. Uh, along yeah, the way. and I can see from the both of you that that you have a, a strong passion for what you do and and it's genuine like we talked about coach Avi earlier right coach Leonard like it's just yes, genuine sir. you know the, and the kids will be able to read that you know if it's not real you know they'll, they'll see right through it and so, mm -hmm. so much respect to both of you guys in that regard thank you you thank said you. your the the coach uh was in his mid-70s Lucas so how, how long had he been coaching Ooh, 50 plus years. I mean, most of his life. Um, yeah. Been in Arizona most of his career. Uh, his, his notoriety probably in Arizona was that he coached Mike Bibby in high school. Mm -hmm. I shut him out in high school. Um, but he had so many great teams and, and, and players throughout the years at his time at Shadow Mountain. Um, over 600 wins. And then, you know, a handful of state championships. And then he left there, started uh, the men's basketball program at Blue Mountain College, which at the time was an all-girls university. 
So he was the first men's basketball coach there. Then he came back to Arizona and then uh, was the head coach at Arizona Christian University for the women's program there. Um, and then came to my alma mater at Horizon. And so that's how we met, which is through that small circle community. Mm -hmm. um, he was there for seven, six or seven years. Mm -hmm. uh, he he uh, just left Horizon last at the end of this year. Um, but yeah, I know uh, so great learning from him and, mm -hmm. and uh, just invaluable experience learning from a guy like him. Absolutely. It sounds like it, Coach. Sounds like you're mm -hmm. a lucky guy. Right. Let's let's talk about some some of y'all's favorite basketball memories, either as a coach uh, or as a player. Just some of your favorite basketball memories, even even if it's from childhood. What comes to mind? Um, for me, you know, my first memories of basketball. I mean, I'm a I'm a baby, I guess, but um, you know, my first memories are probably watching the tail end of Michael Jordan's career in Chicago. Like I vaguely remember like a little bit of that, but for me though, it was all like watching all the Michael Jordan VHS tapes, mm -hmm. uh, the hang time, come fly with me above and beyond. Like I wore those things out and space jam, of course. <laughs> um, but so for me, that was like my, my introduction to basketball. It was Michael Jordan. And, and uh, I, I'm grateful for that just because what a special player. Um, so for me, like, when it comes down to, like, first basketball memories, for sure that was it. But it was so much fun just, just uh, like, for me watching the highest levels of college basketball. And, like, that was just a blast for me as a kid watching that. Um, and then – had a great high school experience all around, like even, even take away basketball from it, um, which is a really fun, fun couple of years for sure. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, just overall, just playing the game with friends, having fun just at its purest form. Mm -hmm. um, and then coaching wise, like great memories. Uh, you know, we had a lot of fun times at Phoenix college at a high level, um, you know, that process was fun. And then for me, as I've gotten a little older and I think I learned a little bit more about what it's really about, it took me a couple of years. Mm -hmm. um, but just seeing the, the kids that you have go on and have success. So I've done it for a, a long enough time now, finally, where kids that I've coached now graduated from college and they're, mm -hmm. they're getting married, you mm -hmm. know, doing these things like that is what's gratifying to see. Um, and then just being able to know that like they still think about you and vice versa, like just randomly getting a text, randomly getting a phone call. Right. You know, so that's, that's the cool stuff. That's the fun stuff for sure. Absolutely. Outstanding. Um, I guess, um, well, I'm a little bit older than, than both of y'all. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to go back a little bit. Uh, my, my first excitement with basketball was back in, and I guess about 78, 79. And um, uh, the, the Lakers, man, Magic Johnson, I mean, to, to this date, you know, I, uh, I'm i a Magic Johnson fan. I've been a Laker fan ever since. Um, you know, rest his soul, Kobe. Uh, but I wasn't the biggest Kobe fan. Um, I was still a Laker fan, but I wasn't the biggest Kobe fan. And, and I uh, told a buddy of mine that uh, – once Kobe retired, we'd get about four or five years. We, we'd be back in the championship. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm almost right. So. <laughs> we'll see, right? We'll see. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, so that, that was my, my beginnings. And, and, and uh, then, you know, I kind of took a turn. I wanted to play football really bad, and I liked it. I played it. And then when I – when I got to high school, you know, it was almost like a forced upon me that I had to do it. And, um, and I was like, but I also want to play basketball. And, uh, so I ended up choosing basketball and then my senior year coach Silicon came and I told you all that story. But, um, as far as playing is concerned, I got to, you know, talk about coach Silicon again, you know, we used to play, I don't, I don't know, Marcus, if, if you're old enough to remember, but, 
the NBA used to have a pro am here in San Antonio where um, like a lot of the Spurs played in it and uh, Frank Garrett, uh, Frank Garrett. Uh, yeah, at, yeah, at, at the Garrett Community Center and at the uh, uh, it, it, the uh, um, it, it used to be over there behind uh, North Star Mall and now it's off of uh, Military Highway, um, Jewish Community Center. Jason, yeah, Jason. Jason. They used to have the games there at the Jewish Community Center too, and you know, being able to play against you know Johnny Moore and. Alvin Robertson, and, and then, you know, seeing those guys, of course, that was thanks to Coach Silsley. I got to play even against the best in the game. Yeah. And, you know, you get to meet, you know, Johnny Moore. I remember how much of a genuine person he was. And, um, you know, just, you just don't you, – you don't you don't think about it until you have a chance to meet them. And, like, hey, they're a person just like I am. Yeah. And um, he, he was really, really nice. Um so getting a chance to play play with those guys, and when Coach Silstein went to St. Mary's, um, his open gyms were, I mean, the best around. I mean, you you had Spurs, you had UTSA, St. Mary's, ex Baylor, ex Houston, ex pro players. They, I mean, it was just it was just a heck of an experience to be able to to play there. So I think those as a player, those are some of the best uh, best of my memories, and then. Um, as far as coaching, I, I got to gotta say, I got to give props to Georgine Troska, who was at Harlandale when I was at Leal, because mm-hmm. uh, I got hired for middle school, but she was able to say, hey, if you want to help me out up here at the high school, you can. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we, I got to help her, and uh, we were able to take uh, Harlandale, I guess, to their first playoff playoff win in 04, 05, or something like that, and went three rounds deep. and Nice. Uh, uh, that was an excellent uh, opportunity. And then when I went to Cole, oh, my gosh, you all, I don't know if you, well, Marcus, you know the tradition yep. there that Coach Moore, I mean, we went to the regional finals twice. Uh, Coach Guerrero, I mean, she had been to the regional finals. You know, just that whole environment was just something to be a part of, um, such a winning tradition. And, um and then lastly, just coming to Jay, like I told you, working with Coach Floyd. I mean, I, y'all, y'all don't know this, but Coach Floyd is, is the funniest man alive. <laughs> okay, I, I'm, I'm here to tell y'all. Yeah. And anybody yeah. watching this or listening to it, if any, Coach Floyd is the funniest man alive. So um, you're not going to have a conversation with him and not laugh. Um, he, had put, he has put me to tears in the text messages just a couple of weeks ago. I'm not going to tell you what he said, but he had me in tears. <laughs> um, you know, being his assistant and, and, and sitting on the bench with him and, and just, you know, some of the things he would say, it's just, it was just fun. You know, it, it, it took basketball to a whole nother level. Once I, once I got here to Jay and was working with coach Floyd, it was, he, he, he's a, he's, he's a trip. So I can't wait to I'm, – I'm going to text him here in a minute and let him know that, that I had to talk about him. So so what I'm going to do is, Coach, I'm going to go on a hunt for somebody else that's funny that was a coach. I'm going to get them both on an episode, and we'll just, <laughs> we'll, we'll just, we'll just see who, who can win that funny battle. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, they're gonna, hey, it's going to be hard to beat Coach Floyd. That's I'll be, I'll be the, the lucky recipient that just gets to sit back and enjoy the t- and my time watching yes. those guys. <laughs> yes, sir. Well, but when, when you work with people like that, Coach, it makes it makes the job so much more enjoyable, you know, mm-hmm. and when, when you love mm-hmm. coming to work. I, I can honestly say I've never felt like I've, I'm going to work. It's it's fun for me, right? And so when you have that feeling, it, it never really gets too stressed out. You know, you, you, I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, there's moments where you, you're trying to get through a tough season or whatever, but, uh, but I, you never feel like this is hard work, you know. Um, mm-hmm. So it's you're a lucky man that, to get to experience that with someone like Coach Floyd. Yes, sir. Um, you know, I, I think when when we talk about what's going on with education right now, with a lot of different places doing different things and distance learning, and some people are in person, you know, and I think there's been a misconception to some people. You see the media and the people on social media kind of saying things, you know, teachers don't want to go to work and yada yada yada. You know, but for us, I mean, you guys, as as we all know. 
there's a, a real passion for what we do and teaching and coaching. And we loved our kids and, you know, we'd be there every day if we could. You know, what, what are some of the amazing things that you've seen from your coworkers that, that are kind of just put on full display right now? Cause they, they've got to be innovative and creative and, and go above mm-hmm. and beyond. So what are, what are some of the things that you've seen that have kind of blown your mind from some of your coworkers? Um, that's a really, really good question, actually. Um, I think the big thing is just seeing – it just kind of reaffirms um, a lot of the great people you work with. Yeah. You know, it's like most of us, I think we enjoy what we do because overwhelmingly – for the most part, like most people in your building are in there for the right reasons and, mm-hmm. and for kids and, and helping them. So it just kind of reaffirms like, wow, like these, these teachers are willing to go above and beyond whatever it takes to make sure that these kids are having the best experience possible based on the situation. Um, and and, and uh, it's even great seeing like teachers who might not be, who might weren't as well versed in technology, you know, prior to this, but like they were willing to do whatever it took to learn, take time to learn from people Mm -hmm. to make sure that they were ready to go come, you know, August, whatever. Um, you know, that was, that's been great to see. Um, and, and yeah, I mean, just being super impressed with, with, you know, fellow colleagues and knowing that they're doing everything they can for our kids based on the situation on the flip side, and maybe I'm being too transparent or too real, but you also do see some teachers where it's like, I wonder like, why are you making this more difficult than it has to be? Or why are you, you know, like, it's like, get over yourselves for a second. Like it's online school. Like it's, yeah, it's not great. Like quit complaining about it. Just make it a fun experience for your kids. But again, that, that's, few, that's few and far between though. I mean, everyone's just been great. Seeing what the administration goes through more than ever mm-hmm. to do just mm-hmm. all the planning and stuff and, and what they're getting prepared for us to do returning to school. Uh, we've got to be patient, you know, and, and, and preaching the patience, you know, with the students and the parents and whatnot. Um, uh, that, that, that's been really, really amazing to me, just the resiliency between uh, teachers, administration and, 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 and the students. Um, you know, it was funny. I was telling you all about, you know, the, the, the volleyball game yesterday and, um, a parent had asked a question and we were both myself and the administrator on duty. We were like, I know, we don't know. You know what? This is new. Let's just embrace it. Let's, let's figure it out. And, uh, and you know, all the parent could do was laugh and, you know, and, and it is, it is what it is. You know, this, this COVID thing is, is very, uh, very serious. And uh, I think we're doing the, the best we can pretty much all over the, the school and, and district. Well, really state the country, in my opinion. I mean, I haven't seen New York or, or whatnot, but I, but I guarantee you the teachers are doing everything they can to, to give the best product to the, uh, to the kids, to the students. Mm. absolutely we got to think about how how is it going for our kids how scary is it for them how how difficult is it for them how can we make it the best products for them and 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 educate them as best as we can and so i mean if we keep the kids in mind which i know you guys are doing you know then 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 we're gonna we're gonna provide a product that's gonna really get us through this and and so we can finally get back face to face right what about um Impactful moments in your career where, where, you, where it goes much deeper than basketball. I know you kind of talked about it a little bit, Lucas, uh, had some kids graduating and you know, getting married and stuff. What, what are some things where, where this goes beyond basketball and it solidifies that concept? Um, yeah, I mean, just kind of expanding on what I said earlier, you know, just the relationships that you build through it, you know, even from like us as players, the relationships you have with your coaches that, you know, you still have to this day, people you worked with, other coaches you worked with, you know, throughout the years who were, who you were on staff with. Um, But, you know, also too, like that side of it, the relationship side of it, where 
you get to be a part of their successes after seeing them graduate college, seeing them have families, this, that, the third. But uh, honestly, kind of a sobering moment was, you know, in the beginning of the summer when, you know, you had the uh, George Floyd incident Mm -hmm. and, you know, all the, the social justice protests going on around the country and, Um, You know, that was beginning of late May, early June. Sorry if uh, I'm incorrect with the timing there. Um, But, you know, having having that moment of uh, kind of feeling helpless, like I've always felt in in many situations similar to that in many ways. Um, But having, you know, your administration reach out to you and say, hey, you know, you probably should put out a statement or something or send an email to, to your families to make a post out to the community, you know, kind of reflecting on what is taking place in our country right now and, and, you know, all of that. And kind of for the first time, it was like, whoa, like that's kind of a, kind of a big responsibility there to put together, like say the right things, mm-hmm. say how I genuinely feel, but also be I don't know, politically correct is not the right word, but, you know, just be understanding of all emotions and all feelings and it involved in, in such a big, important issue uh, mm-hmm. to this day. But just kind of being tasked with that responsibility was, was humbling and, and sobering where it's like, well, this, this is bigger than basketball. And it was a reminder that like, there are going to be times, you know, where you do talk about things that aren't basketball. And it's not just the friendly relationship side of things either, but, you know, it's talking – about real life issues and, mm. um, and, and, and things of that nature. So, yeah, I mean, just kind of having that responsibility as a coach where it's like when, when things hit the fan, man, like you got to be ready to have those tough conversations uh, that are bigger than basketball and, and help guide them uh, in, in whatever way you can. Wow, very well put. Very well put. Um, I, I can tell you that, you know, we, once you've coached for a while, of course, you've built so many relationships with, with kids. And, and it is, in my opinion, humbling when they come back to you and say, hey, coach, how can I, you know, be a coach like you? And how can I uh, do this? Can you help me out with, with this? Do you know anybody that – and, you know, all I can reflect on is what my coach did for me. I definitely have to do for my kids yeah. and um, because I couldn't have done it without them and – you know, I, I don't know, you know, the impact I'm going to have on that kid. So I got to bend over backwards to, to help them. You know, I've had – when I first started teaching in 2002, um, and it's so funny, well, uh, one of those young ladies I still keep in touch with to this date, um, and she was in the seventh grade then, um, and she'll call me, ask me about, you know, what can she do? for her son, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, you know, skill wise, or do I know any teams at that age? And, um, this past weekend, there was a, a, a tournament here in town and a couple of my kids were playing in it. So I went to, to watch and lo and behold, this young lady's little brother was coaching a team oh, wow. and it, it was, uh, it was so neat. Oh, um, Rocky Brasenio. Oh, yeah, yeah. He was coaching uh, – Yeah. He was coaching Rock- our girls team over there. Yes, Rocky. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so his older sister was one of the very first kids I taught and coached when I, when I got out of the military. So uh, – but, you know, just, just the family um, – the family impacts, I think, uh, when you get to meet kids and – You know, yeah, basketball is is, is a, a joining point or a, a common thing you have. But when you start hearing about kids whose parents have lost their jobs, mm-hmm. you start hearing about um kid couldn't come to practice because they were digging a trench so water wouldn't come in their house. Mm-hmm. Um, when you start, you know, having a parent um, ask you, 
if you know of a way that, you know, with this COVID and stuff like that, do you know of a way how they can get to the food bank? So, that the, or not the, the, uh, where they, where they were passing out the meals and stuff. Yeah, exactly. But asking, you know, well, how can I get there? Yeah. You know, the, the same, you know, the same family, Hey, I don't, I don't have a computer. Can you, uh, register or sign my daughter up so she can get a computer? I mean, it, you know, it, it's things like that when you realize basketball means absolutely nothing. Yeah. Um, uh, in, in the big scheme of, of life, you know, the only thing it did was it just kind of brought us together where I can hopefully help in another way. Um, those are a lot of the things that, that I've, I've actually gotten to witness and, and realize, Hey, it's, it, it's more than, it's more than basketball. It makes it all worth it too. When you see those kids have success and, and mm-hmm. go on and, and, and they love to come back, you know, they love to come back and visit and, and tell you all about it. <laughs> oh man, can, can I share one more story? I'm sorry. Absolutely. E, what's today? Sunday. So I, it had to have been Thursday. So we're, uh, of course, we're doing the virtual stuff, and and I had a kid that uh, came on or sent me an email Thursday night because he, he didn't come on the video, you know, he didn't come on the zoom during a class period. And so he sent me an email and he was like, uh, you know, something had happened with his computer and, um, uh, he couldn't get on. And he said that, uh, he said, coach, uh, not, not his computer, his, his network, his internet. He said, coach, I don't know if you know this, but, um, I don't have a computer I'm doing right now. I'm doing everything on my phone. And I'm like, you've done all these assignments on your phone. And he said, yes, sir. You know, I don't, I don't, you know, I haven't had a chance to get a computer and this and that. And he said, I, you know, I apologize for not being there today. And I'm like, you know what? You're one of those kids that's definitely going to be successful in the long run, simply because you're always finding a way to make something happen rather than making an excuse why you can't. Yes, sir. And uh, that young man uh, really, really, really uh, impressed me. And uh, he emailed me yesterday. Now, yesterday was Saturday. Yes. Now, honestly, I didn't look at my computer until today. And I saw he had emailed me just asking a simple question. Hey, when did you say this project was due? Yeah. On Saturday. On his phone. Yeah, most kids aren't thinking about their schoolwork on a Saturday. Yeah, at all. And so I just I had to tell him. I said, you know what, young man, you're you're going to be extremely successful when you grow up. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I I can't wait to see it. You know, and and I can imagine that those words that you told him about being successful because of his his uh, character and resiliency is. Uh, those are the kind of words that stick with the, those kids for the rest of their life. You know, he'll reflect mm-hmm. back on those things. Yeah, I, I, I hope so. Because, uh, well, actually, I, I just, I just feel it. I mean, I just feel it. He's going to be something special, and he's not even an athlete. You know what I'm saying? It's just a kid that's that's uh, determined to do well. I love it. Let's mm-hmm. uh. Let's let's take a, a a quick turn and and you guys name me your top three basketball movies of all time. I'm gonna I'm gonna guess that Lucas is probably uh, Jordan related somewhere along the line. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're gonna talk about mo- like, because yeah, I mean, it, we could go down the the discussion of documentaries. I'll separate movies and documentaries. Yeah, let, let's just say uh, movies, just movies, no documentaries allowed, just movies. All right. And this will show my age for sure. <laughs> um, sorry if you hear my coffee brewing in the background. Um, no, uh, in, in no particular order, though. But for me, uh, I would probably go with Space Jam, right? That was one of the first, first I've ever watched. Not really a basketball movie, but basketball's featured in the movie. Uh-huh. Um, and then uh, I really liked uh, Coach Carter with uh, Samuel L. Jackson. Absolutely. Uh, I like that one. And then uh, probably the, the, the oldest one for me, but a classic, uh, Hoosiers. Yeah. <laughs> Coach, you can't go wrong with any of those, just so you know. Those are all great movies. <laughs> right. 
and I I have to agree with you at least on two of them, Hoosiers and uh, and Coach Carter, you know. Um, and then I got to say, white man can't jump. That, that that's that's another one of my all time yes. favorites. Yes. <laughs> um, I just the, that's I don't know, man. Uh, Woody Harrelson and. Um, their, their chemistry was remarkable, on-screen chemistry. Yes, yes. so I, I got to go with those three. White men can't jump, Hoosiers, and uh, Coach Carter. Coach, you know, I've asked that question you know, a few times, and and uh, and nobody's ever said that except me because somebody actually asked me what my movies were, and, and, and White Man Can't Jump is definitely one of my favorite basketball movies. And, and so mm-hmm. I'm going to give you mad respect because you're the only other guy that said that. <laughs> Appreciate it. <laughs> you guys – uh. I'm assuming I've been watching some NBA basketball in the bubble. And so mm-hmm. I don't have to ask Coach Leonard who he picks to win the NBA championship because he <laughs> – very clear, you know, but uh, Coach Amita, who, who are you kind of picking at this point? Well, you? first off, I'll say this about the bubble. It's well, Actually, forget the bubble, all sport. It's been so great to have all these sports start up kind of at the right – the same time. Yeah. Um, it's like sports nonstop on TV, which has been great. You know, I'm not going to lie. I got my, uh, got my laptop open in the living room, uh, you know, when I'm teaching and then I'll have a bubble game on, a, a, you know, <laughs> 1030 in the morning, our time, which is great. We've all um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, Oh, it's the same thing during March madness. It's like, all right, guys, oh. I'm going to give you an assignment. However, we are going to be watching, uh, you know, Bucknell take on the mighty Bruins of Belmont or something. Right. <laughs> um, but, um but uh but no uh I'm a Spurs fan. Nice. Spurs had a shot to make it, nice. but they still didn't play the same amount of games as the Suns and the other teams. I mean yeah. I get it, you gotta win whatever. But um you know what? I'm a I'm a roll with the bandwagon though and, and uh, I like the heat. Yeah. No one talked about the heat and 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 who am I to judge NBA coaches? It's easy to be critiquing people. But when LeBron was doing things with the Heat, I was like, oh, Spolstra, he, he's just there. But, man, I mean, he's done a phenomenal job with them throughout the years. And it's just the right collection of guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but you can't ignore, like, the Lakers and their talent and what they have going on. Yep. Um, so I'm thinking it's a Lakers-Miami final. And uh, – and then we'll see what what comes of it from there. You know, just talking about Coach Spolster, and just in regard to what you're saying, you're right. It's easy for people to critique, you know, Phil Jackson and, yeah. and all these guys that have had these great players, you know, but that's not easy to do. That's not exactly. easy to coach those guys and manage egos. Uh, but to uh, Spolster's uh, credit, you know, he's done some remarkable things, like you said, even after those guys left. I mean, he's really yeah. – Put on full display how amazing of a coach he really is, and mm-hmm. so uh, and me, me discrediting like not giving him credit was the year that Ray Allen hit that shot against the Spurs in Game Six. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, that, that was me being an angry, you know, twenty something. <laughs> let me let me ask you this, Coach. You know, uh, what made you a Spurs fan? It's easy for me, and I don't know if Coach he's a Lakers fan, but like I grew up in San Antonio, diehard Spurs fan. So for you, what well, was it? For me, it was, you know, being, being young and living in Texas, you yeah. know. So, like, my, my memories are getting in the car with my dad and driving a couple hours to San Antonio and, and you know, watching the Spurs play. Um, and actually, my first NBA game was Spurs and the Lakers, 97, I think, 97, 98, maybe. And there was a brawl – or not a brawl, but there was a little tussle – uh, at the end of the game, I'm like, this is awesome. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I mean, it's funny because that started me liking the Spurs, you know, and, you know, I was living in Texas in 99 when they won in the lockout year. And, um, I mean, hard not to like some of those guys, right? Just mm. hardworking guys and, you know, represented the city and the state well. Um, but then as I got older and I was living in Phoenix – like, that's when Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire and those guys were running and gunning, and it was fun. And the one thing I'll say about Phoenix fans, 
they're so wishy-washy. Like, when things are good, the whole town loves that team. When things are bad, like, no one cares. And it's – since I've lived a couple, a couple different places, you can definitely tell, like, how fans are. And that's the one frustrating thing with Suns fans or Phoenix sports fans in general. But, I mean, back when the Suns were really having fun with D'Antoni and those guys, like, the city was electric, man. Like, it was, it was crazy. But they had all those battles with the Spurs. Yeah, they did. So, man. I was, like, conflicted. Like, I love these Suns, but I, I did like these Spurs. But, man, I was a Spurs, like, I, I did not like them for a couple of years. I thought they were dirty. I thought they flopped too much. <laughs> and then, it's funny, the evolution, I, I go back. Then I started coaching and, you know, <laughs> watching the Spurs again. And I'm like, holy cow, like, this is, this is real basketball right here. Like, so totally had that, like, light bulb moment. Like, I was just a teenager angry at the, the Spurs for being so good. Um, so I definitely missed out on a couple of good years there uh, being a Spurs fan. But, yeah, <laughs> that was kind of my, uh, my journey there. Well, we're glad to have recruited you as a Spurs fan, man. Uh, <laughs> Co- Coach Pop, you know, he's he's pretty remarkable, man. And so uh, we've been blessed as, uh, mm. you know, like myself growing up in the city, watching David Robinson, Tim Duncan, those guys, and watching how Pop did what he did and, and with, with what he had and and uh, couldn't learn from a better from a better professional organization. Mm-hmm. All right, Coach yeah. Leonard, go ahead and give us your Lakers take. What do you got? Well, let me – well, one, I've been a Lakers fan since I was 11 years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm not going to hold it against nope. you. <laughs> but, of course, being in San Antonio, and like I told you, being able to play with Johnny Moore and Albert Robertson and Willie Anderson, play ball with those guys a lot, um, you, you tend to appreciate, you know, what they do. Yep. But here's my thing. And we talk about San Antonio fans and all that. Yeah. I remember driving to Hemisphere Arena yeah. to go watch a game, and I'd pay $5 for a ticket and walk all the way down and sit behind the bench. Oh, wow. To the point at where I could say, hey, Alvin, go check in. <laughs> like that, okay? Yeah. And, you know, okay, so where were those Spurs fans then? Yeah, no, you're <laughs> right. All these so-called Spurs fans. You're right. Okay. I'll, I'll say this so, about Spurs fans. The new, the newer generation, and I say new generation, like from 97 up until oh, about now. Oh, when they started winning championships? That's, that's what I'm saying. So th- that generation of Spurs fans are crazy. Before that, yes. though, you're talking before my time too, Coach. I was only <laughs> – I was born in 1984, Coach. I, I didn't uh, – <laughs> I, I can't be held responsible for those guys. <laughs> that's funny so yeah so that that's my take you know on uh spurs fans so my lakers have been getting they've been getting pummeled for the past couple of years and whatnot and now i can't find a spurs fan <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love it i love it i love it you know but the, the lakers and the spurs had some good battles so let me ask you this uh when that was going down uh, obviously, you're you're maroon, uh, yellow, uh, purple, and gold the whole time. Yes, sir. Now here's the funny part. I'm teaching at Leal. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's got to be my first year there, and it was the was that the year after. Okay, so they had done their three P, 2001, 2002. So yeah, it was that next year when the Spurs beat them, and the the Lakers were crying. They, they had pictures of uh, Derek Fisher and, and Kobe and them crying, right? So one of the teachers at Leal, okay, <laughs> get this, bro. So she – and where is she now? I think she's at Saul Ross right now. She's still teaching Saul Ross. But she went back to school, got the custodians to let her – now I teach computer class, okay? So she went and she decorated my door – First off, with the Lakers crying and all that stuff. And then she had all these San Antonio, all these Spurs screensavers put on all of my computers. <laughs> and then had all kinds of decorations coming out of the ceiling and stuff like that. And Because, um, see, I used to actually wear Laker gear to class. 
You're crazy. You know, I, that, that's how ate up I was. Yeah. And um, so then she uh, – and, of course, she had, a, like, a Tim Duncan – not Tim Duncan, a David Robinson jersey hanging up in there. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. So that, that, was, that was pretty neat and pretty fun. And because everybody was making fun of me and all my friends, man, the Lakers ain't nothing. I was like, you know what? Y'all just wait. When Kobe retires, we will start over. Yeah. And, and I told him, I said, it won't take more than five years. Now, I don't exactly remember when Kobe retired, but I think about four years ago. Four, you might be, on, so. you might be on, on par to get that championship. I think they're the favorites as far as talent goes right now. I think so. But, um, like you were saying, Miami, and then actually, I was kind of scared of, of Boston, and mm-hmm. and I still think Boston may pull this off um, against Miami. I don't know. Um, watching the game last night was was very impressive to me. They fought um, back. I love it. Yeah, they did. Yeah, they did. So uh, we'll see. And you can't count Denver out. I mean, there. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. If Denver wins and goes to the championship, I'll be just as happy because I like the way they're playing. Oh, I'm going to go buy a Denver jersey. I'm going to go buy some T-shirts, and I'll represent. Uh, I will be on the bandwagon, yes, because, uh, you know, you got to be a basketball fan first and then support your team. And I think that would just be so neat to see, like, Denver and Miami, two teams that, well, Miami hadn't been in a while, but, you know, see those two teams playing the championship. That would be really exciting. It would, it would be neat to see Denver and another underdog type team in there. So I, I would love to see Denver Miami. That that would be ideal for a basketball purist type of perspective. You know they're running some yes, beautiful sir. stuff and and the ball movement, mm-hmm. the body movement, and and the tenacity that they're playing with is. I mean, I have heard. I was going to ask you guys. You know how impressive was it to watch Denver do what they did to to the Clippers and make that comeback, right? And and and. Uh, and not only them, but also the series before, right? Where they're just mm-hmm. no fight, no no uh, no quit left in them, right? They're just going to keep fighting, and uh, and right. that's why I'm saying with the Lakers, better be careful. I mean, okay, yeah, we won game one pretty easy, you know. Denver doesn't care, yeah. you know. Hey, they might go down three zero and be the first team in NBA history to come back and win four in a row. Yeah, you don't know uh, with with the way they're built and and, and the way they're they're running things. Well, according to Snoop Dogg, he, he said that they're not the Clippers, so it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. All right, uh, you, you, random question. Top three action movies of all time. Ooh. Ooh. See, it's always tough when you ask me, ask me movie rankings because I like so many of them and – it's hard for me to place in the top oh. three action movies. Well, your your favorite one, whatever. It don't have to be the best one in history, but your yeah. favorite action movies. Well, I wouldn't even call. I mean, I wouldn't describe it as action, but it's probably as. Actually, yeah, I take that back. Um, I really have liked the the Equalizer movies Denzel's done. <laughs> oh, they're great! Yeah, they're awesome. <laughs> those are those are phenomenal. Uh-huh. Um, but. For me, though, movie-wise, I mean, I like comedies with any comedy. Um, but then where I nerd out, I am, I am a, a huge <laughs> Star Wars fan. Yeah. And people, people are like, oh, I don't see that. I'm like, no, like, I, I could talk about it all day long. We could have a, a podcast about – you know, I might start a Star Wars podcast now <laughs> and just talk. Well, hit I me up. Go, I'm a Star Wars fan. I'll, I'll, I'll nerd out, too. My, my wife is like – she told me, she goes, you know – now, I'm not picking on people that are nerds. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a nerd, I'm saying. So she's like, people think you're this guy. They, they think you're cool. They want to be your friend. But they really don't know that you're just this big nerd. <laughs> like when you're at home, you're just this big old nerd. And I said, if, if uh, that could be hurtful to my feelings if I didn't know you were joking, right? <laughs> you know, and uh, yeah. <laughs> that's funny. That new Mandalorian trailer looks pretty amazing, though, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. I'm fired up, baby. October. That Mandalorian. I don't know if you like Star Wars, Coach Leonard, but uh, the Mandalorian series has been pretty awesome. Um, I, uh, well, y'all already know how old I am, and y'all are gonna say I am the dumbest person in the world, but I have not seen one Star Wars movie. You're not the only person that said that, Coach. You know, not yeah. one. I actually hear that more and more now. People are like, "Yeah, I've never seen one," and I'm like, "All right." Oh, okay. So I'm not. So I'm not in the. the I'm not in the minority on that. <laughs> no, I, I think we're judging. used to hearing it. Yeah, 
<laughs> okay. All right. Uh, <laughs> well, one, he, he hit the nail on the head with the equalizer, but also all of Jason Bourne oh, yeah. and yeah. all of 007. Okay. There you go. I have the entire 007 library, <laughs> and I have every one of Jason Bourne movies. And then uh, Equalizer, they're just – I'm a gadget guy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Uh, I, you know, and it, it's sad. Being gadget, being a computer teacher, you know, uh, I'm on the computer all the time, and I love it. But unfortunately, you lose the dexterity in your fingers. Mm-hmm. And I had to go to the dentist yesterday. I had to fill out some paperwork. I can't even write. You know, I write my, my penmanship's all jacked up and stuff like that. Isn't it, uh, isn't it so weird to write? Like, yes. <laughs> like yes. whenever I have to, like, you know, like I, I was at the doctor in June just getting my like annual physical and I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Like, <laughs> it makes me scared when I have to go on a whiteboard for the first time in a couple months. I need to start practicing. <laughs> no, I used to take ultimate pride in my penmanship, right? I used to love to draw and write. And uh, and it's the same thing. I was I was starting writing stuff, and it looked absolutely terrible. Like I was so disappointed in myself. I couldn't read my writing. Uh, it's I know the lady called me up. She said, uh, "What letter is this?" I was like, "Oh man, I that was embarrassing." But hey, we so know what we learned. I asked this question uh, once, but I, I think I know your answer, Coach Leonard. Now that you bring up those movies, so if you have a fight scene and you got Jason Bourne in this fight scene. And you've got uh, John Wick in this fight scene. And you've got, uh, who was the other one? Oh, Liam Neeson from Taken, right? We'll throw Denzel in the mix, too, from Equalizer. So if you got this fight scene where they all show up in the same place and they're, they're not on the same side, who's going to come out of that victorious? Man. <laughs> I, I'm going to, I had forgotten about taking, yeah. uh, I had forgotten about that. And I have all three of those too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, I might have to, I might have to take Liam. Liam Neeson. Yeah. yeah. He might get it done. <laughs> I, I, I think, I think I might have to take him. Just for perspective though, coach Leonard, it wouldn't even be a choice if the Mandalorian was in that mix. Cause he'd come out. Uh, victorious. <laughs> <laughs> you put any Star Wars guy in there, then it's over. Just, just to let you, you know. <laughs> All you know, right. <laughs> uh, real quick, you know, um, just for, for, for some advice you'd give other coaches. You guys, we're, we're in a season, you know how it can get real stressful, being, long nights, early mornings. You know, what are some advice you'd give, some helpful tips on, on how you guys clear your mind you know, stay sharp, uh, stay healthy, you know, you know, stay charged up for the next day. Uh, what is some advice you'd give other coaches out there? Well, the big thing for me has been and, and will be for me is make sure that you enjoy the, the, the people you're working with on your staff, the people you hire, right? And because and, when there are those early mornings and those long nights when it's easy to work with them, and it's enjoyable to work with them, um, then you're able to kind of decompress together at the same time and talk things through and, and, and you know, things of that nature. Um, but for me, I've always been big on, like, even in the season, like, you still got to find that time where you can have, have that space, have that, like, and whatever that is for you. Like, for me, that's every day working out and whether it's like I'm lifting or running, which I'm trying to get better at running, um, or even like just walking on the track on campus, like on my break, on my prep period, in between practices, in between whatever we're doing, and throwing on a podcast or, you know, calling people back and catching up, like just finding those little moments to have that time, you know, and and, um, because, I mean, we all know once – once we get that green light, it's, it's nonstop till the end. And, and, um, you know, just trying to find that space and that time for yourself and, and, you know, go about it that way. Well, um, 
you know, you hit the nail on the head with your, uh, with your comment about like who you work with. I remember coach Floyd telling me that um, you, you always want, want to hire, you know, loyal, uh, loyal people that you can work with and, and whatnot. But it's one thing I would, I would tell young coaches coming up, you know, is, is one, be a student of the game. Uh, you, you have to be a, a student. You know, I, I'm even trying to get that through to my players. You know, you have to be a student. You have to watch film. You have to, you know, talk to, to other coaches. You have to be willing to ask. And um, I think that's the biggest uh, – and get into it because you like it. Get into it because you, you love the, the sport, whatever sport that is. Um, because coaching is very, very, very time-consuming if – you want to give the kids the most that, or get the most out of your kids. Uh, oops, excuse me, was that me? No. Oh. Excuse me. Okay, so just uh, uh, make sure you love it before you get into it. I get it. Sometimes you are appointed to, oh, wait, uh, you know what? Uh, we need to coach your coaching. Okay, but I'm talking for the, for the vast majority, uh, you know, of coaches. You know, my, my advice is, 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 is be a student of the game and don't just be uh, satisfied with what, you know, there are so many, so many great coaches, you know, out there that are willing to help um, and, you know, reach out, go to clinic and, and, and just, just, just be a, be a student. And, and I'll add to that too, mm -hmm. uh, a piece, especially probably you guys in Texas, I've learned so much from, he's become one of my best friends uh, our football coach at my last school. I, I have, I, I, and I helped him out. He was like, Hey, I think it's important that we have a basketball coach on our staff so we can promote multi-sport athletes and yeah. stuff. And it was, it, it was one of the best experiences I've had helping him out for three years. And one, we developed a great friendship, but on top of that, I learned more. And this is no disrespect to anybody I've worked for in the past, mm -hmm. but, but just that football model and that football organization and structure yeah. I learned so much from so I even tell people now too like go watch your your high school football team practice go watch your baseball team practice talk to their coaches right and and really get to know how they do things and and and, and you know all of that um the school I'm at now I mean it's a football powerhouse it's you know six out of the last seven state championships you know, power five guys left and right. Yeah. Um, so, like, we benefit from that in, <laughs> like, our program does, getting some yeah. of those athletes out. Um, but, again, like, I'm, I'm trying to find time to pick the brain of anyone on their staff or just ask them questions like, hey, how have you done this in the past? So, anytime you can reach out to coaches from other sports that you can connect with, too, a, a huge way to, to grow and learn as well. Absolutely. You know, a, a, a good coach is a good coach regardless of the sport. You know, we can learn from, from any of those guys. And so I couldn't agree more with, with both of y'all. Outstanding. Well, fellas, I, I appreciate your time. You know, I don't want to take up your whole Sunday. You know, we got to prep for work tomorrow. But uh, I do appreciate y'all's time. I wish y'all nothing but the best of luck. And, and hopefully we all get to have seasons, right? You know, and, and, yes, and I sir. hope you guys stay safe out there. And if y'all ever need something, you know, feel free to reach out. Most definitely. Thank you for the invite. Uh, Lucas, it was uh, a pleasure to meet you. Yeah, and good, uh, you. good luck to you out there in Arizona. And, uh, and Marcus, hopefully we'll be able to touch base and, and talk about some old times uh, here, here shortly. Yes, sir. All right. Awesome. Hey, good luck, fellas. Yeah. And, uh, it was a pleasure. Thanks. Good luck, guys. Yes, sir. Appreciate, Appreciate you guys. Y'all stay safe. Hey, you too. Appreciate it.